welcome back to another episode of Intuition. In today's video, you guessed it, we're answering some more questions. Specifically, we're going to be answering some more pharmacy stats questions. These questions are going to be concept-driven questions to make sure that you understand the major principles behind biostats. So you definitely want to stay tuned and make sure that you know how to answer these questions. All right, let's dive into it. Question number one. Question number one says, two pharmacists conduct the same study to determine the average blood pressure of patients at different clinics. Clinic one has a total of 500 patients of which pharmacist one monitors 200 patients. Whereas clinic two has a total of 300 patients of which pharmacist two monitors 150 patients. Pharmacist one documents an average systolic blood pressure of 140 millimeters of mercury with eight millimeters of mercury standard deviation. While pharmacist two documents an average systolic blood pressure of 136 millimeters of mercury with 10 millimeters of mercury standard deviation. Which pharmacist has more accurate results? Assume that all patients were randomly selected. So we have two pharmacists doing the same study at two different clinics. Now, when it comes to getting accurate results, to be accurate means to get an answer that is close to the real answer, right? There's a real answer for both of these clinics. And if both pharmacists wanted to get the real answer, the most accurate answer, they would measure the blood pressure of every patient in the clinic. Then that average value would be the true average value for the patients in that clinic. But for these studies, the pharmacists are not going to measure the blood pressure for every patient in their clinic. One pharmacist is only going to document the blood pressure of 200 patients out of the 500 patients that visit that clinic. And the other pharmacist is only going to document the blood pressure of 150 patients out of the 300 that visits that clinic. If accuracy is determined by the percentage of the population sampled, then pharmacist number two is going to have the more accurate result because that pharmacist had a sample size of 50% of the total population. That pharmacist is going to monitor 150 patients out of 300. So that's 50% of the population for that clinic. Whereas the other pharmacist is only going to monitor 200 out of 500, which is less than 50%. And since both studies were done in exactly the same way, and all patients were selected randomly, pharmacist number two is going to obtain more accurate results, okay? So the correct answer would be pharmacist number two. That would be answer choice B. The larger your sample size is compared to the total population, the more accurate your results are going to be. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on to question number two. Question number two says, a study is conducted to determine the average difference in a person's TSH level between 20 and 30 years old. Which of the following 95% confident intervals would indicate no statistical difference in TSH levels? This study is just going to be measuring the difference in TSH level between the age of 20 and the age of 30. And when it comes to looking at differences, statistical difference is going to be an interval where zero is not within the interval because zero difference means that the levels does not change. So an interval like that, is not statistically significant. So when we go through these intervals, the only interval that contains the number zero is answer choice C, negative one to 1.5. So that interval says that TSH level can decrease or it can increase. Which one is it? It's either gonna go up or go down. So the fact that it's saying that it can go down or go up means that it doesn't know what's gonna happen. So this interval is not statistically significant because this interval says that there's a possibility that TSH level can go up or down. Whereas all the other intervals have a definite position. So C will be the answer that is not statistically significant. And that would be the correct answer. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Let's move on to question number three. All right, question number three. Question number three says, which of the following is a correct description of the term statistical power? You should definitely know what the definition of statistical power is. Looking at these answer choices, you should automatically see that answer choice C is the correct answer. Statistical power is the probability of detecting statistical difference. So if a study meets power, then that means that the study is likely to show statistical difference in the results. So think of statistical power as a microscope. If a study has good statistical power, that means that it has a very powerful microscope. It can see tiny differences between objects. Whereas if a study is underpowered, things are blurred. And even though there might be differences between two objects, the study is not going to be able to see that difference because the study is underpowered, okay? And that's the answer to this question. 
And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it. So let me know if it was helpful. Let me know if you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. And like always, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.